are we sure that the magnetic field can't do work on a charged particle? Because I've seen some pretty crazy stuff happen with magnetic fields and charged particles in my life. And it's a little bit hard to believe that no work is being done. For example, the first way it gets a little bit more complicated is let's have the B field go to the right. Okay, B field that way. Let's put a charged particle in here, Q, and give it a velocity. Let's be crazy and not make it perpendicular to B. Ooh, okay, let's make it be like that. Well, then it's going to have a component forward, call it VX, and a component up, call it VY. All right, so VY is what wants to make it go in a circle. So let's see, uh, V cross B in, the force would be in. And of course that force's direction will change. That's gonna make it wanna spiral like this, or go in a circle like this. What about this component? The VX is just gonna drift. So a charged particle in a magnetic field actually usually makes a spiral. It'll kinda do something like that. But still, there's no work being done. All right? In the plane, it's just going in a circle. There's no work being done as it goes in a circle. It's going at the same speed. In this direction, Vx is constant. If you calculate the total velocity as it goes around this spiral, the speed is not changing. So no work is being done. What if you'd make a magnetic bottle? Magnetic bottle. Mm, so what that is, is if you have two bar magnets, it's pretty easy to make actually, let's see. Uh, the field goes from north to south, so here's south, and you put another one over here. This wouldn't make a very good one, but you could make it this way. So the field lines wanna go from north to south, but if you get these really close, like that, it'll go from north to south, and then instead of going around, it'll kinda go like that, and like that. And you'll get this case where you have a non-uniform field. non-uniform B. <clears throat> so let's think about what a particle would do. Let's draw this a little bit bigger. So here are the field lines where it's far apart, and here are the field lines as they're coming together. And we'll just kind of have them do like that. So here's a more idealistic view of the non-uniform field. Okay. We could have a particle coming in. It's spiraling in. Here it comes. And we got to think about what's going to happen to that particle when it's in the non-uniform region. Okay, so say it gets to here. And we've been thinking it's been going in a circle, but what's really going to happen to this circle? Let's see. So it goes in a circle because, say the particle's right here, and it's spiraling. I forgot which way it's going. Oh, it's going up, so the force is out. So it's coming out of the board at you. Okay? Say this thing's coming out of the board. V, uh, if, the, if the field were straight, it'd be V cross B, it would go down, right? If it's going into the board, cross B, it would be pushed down and go this way. Here, the B is actually a slightly different direction. It's, say, into the board, but instead of crossing to the B like that, we cross the B like that, right? So the fact that the field is pointing a little bit this way means the force is actually a little bit back, okay? It's got a component down, but it also has a component x. And that component is pushing against this drift this way. It's going to accelerate it back. And then if it's down here, you do, let's see, so it's coming uh, out of the board at you, v uh, cross b. It's going like this. So the fact that the field is non-uniform as it goes around the circle makes it keep going in a circle in terms of its y force but it pushes it back, okay? So what happens actually is that the thing spirals and it bounces back, okay? And if you have two of them, it's a bottle. The little particles will spiral along the field line and then the non-uniformity of the field lines will make them come back and it'll go to this side and the non-uniformity will make it come back and it'll go to this side and back and forth and back and forth. Surely, the magnetic field is doing work on the particle. It's like a mass on a spring almost. It's just passing it back and forth. It even happens in the real world. If you look at the Earth, the Earth has a magnetic field. Let's draw the Earth again. Mm, there it is. 
ideas and some stuff out here. Okay, the Earth's magnetic field goes north to south like that. Like that, and it's very tight here at the poles. And it's not so tight as you get farther away. This is a magnetic bottle. Charged particles from space get trapped along these field lines. And here they get really concentrated. And the non-uniformity of the field makes them go back. And then they go down. They're like really fast migratory birds. And then they go back this way, like this. Charged particles constantly do that. And when they get here, they interact with the atmosphere and make the auroras. So the aurora you're familiar with is really just particles moving in this magnetic bottle. So it definitely happens. but in the whole process, it's not doing, the magnetic field's not doing any work on the particle. The speed of the particle in this entire complicated trajectory is constant. Now you may say, how could it be constant? Because you're changing the x, right? So this velocity in the x went away, but the velocity around the circle speeds up. It all works out in the end that the speed of this entire process is constant. It doesn't spiral around here and come to a stop and then speed back up. It actually speeds up as it goes through the really tight part to keep the speed through the whole process constant. So the bottom line is, a static B field never does work on a free charged particle. It just can't. It can't. It can't because it always pushes. Its force is always at right angles to the velocity. It just physically can't do work.